The doctor and Clara traveled to 1893 Yorkshire and reached a new little town, Sweetville, run by Winifred Gillyflower and her mysterious partner. While investigating the town, the two were taken by Gillyflower's guards into a creepy dungeon, where they were lowered down into a strange red liquid, known locally as the Crimson Horror. Clara was successfully preserved by the matter and was placed with another survivor into a glass dome in one of the Sweetville houses, awaiting the next part of Mrs. Gillyflower's insane plan. After Jenny Flint rescued the doctor from being held by Ada Gillyflower in an almost catatonic condition, they eventually found Clara. The doctor broke the glass, took Clara out and pulled her out of her puppet condition. Clara, the doctor and Jenny set off to finally defeat Mrs. Gillyflower in a tower in the town. Gillyflower, along with her mysterious partner, the repulsive red leech, Mr. Sweet, planned to fire a rocket that would spread the crimson horror all around the world wiping humanity out except for those preserved by being lowered into the liquid. Clara broke a chair on Mrs. Gillyflower's control console preventing her from triggering the rocket. After the Crimson Horror was safely removed from the rocket, Mrs. Gillyflower threatened to kill the doctor and Clara anyway. She was shot by Strax and fell to the ground, suffering fatal injuries. Mrs. Gillyflower died and Mr. Sweet was also killed by Mrs. Gillyflower's daughter, Ada. The doctor brought Clara back to the 21st century to the Maitland family house. Angie and Artie, the children she looked after, found photos from her adventures with the doctor on her laptop and found out that she was a time traveler. When going through the photos, Clara saw one of her past lives, Clara Oswald, in Victorian London. Realizing that both her physical appearance and where the picture took place in was different, Clara began to suspect something wasn't right. Before she could process the thought entirely, the kids begged her to take them to an adventure, or else they would tell their father that their nanny was a time traveler. Clara, lacking any other choice, agreed. The doctor took Clara, Artie and Angie to the abandoned theme park, Hedgewick's World of Wonders, where Angie and Artie were taken by the Cybermen, who had been reawakened from their tombs after being presumed long extinct. The doctor put Clara in charge of the punishment platoon to fight the Cybermen and began a game of chess to end the stalemate over his mind with the Cyber Planner, Mr. Clever. The doctor released the children in exchange for one of his chess pieces and pulled in the local resources to stop the Cybermen. The missing emperor, Luton's Nimrod Kendrick Cord Longstaff XLI, revealed himself as having been their short statured friend Porridge and activated the planet destroying bomb. This summoned his spaceship transmatting the humans on Hedgewick's world to safety while the Cybermen were left behind on Hedgewick's world. Porridge proposed to Clara, but she declined. The doctor returned Clara, Angie and Artie home. Clara visited Tickle Town with the doctor and was trapped in a roller coaster. She eventually escaped in the TARDIS and visited the Avocado Seas of Venifax, where they visited an archaeological dig. While the doctor enjoyed himself, Clara quickly got bored and pressed some buttons on the archaeologist's equipment, accidentally turning off the barrier keeping the site from being flooded by the avocado seas. Nobody got hurt, but the entire expedition was ruined and everyone got wet. After leaving Venifax, Clara changed into dry clothes in the TARDIS. When she came out, the doctor had landed in Dallas in 1963. Clara and the doctor discovered a parasite called the Shroud which was feeding off of the grief of the assassination of John F. Kennedy. After allying with some clowns from the planet Semptes, the doctor took the Shroud to Venifax and trapped it there. Sometime later, whilst at home with Angie and Artie, Clara received a letter from Vastra laced with a soporific that took her into a conference call. There, she learned that the murderer Clarence DeMarco had said, The doctor has a secret, you know. He has one he will take to the grave. And it is discovered, and showed Vastra the coordinates to where the doctor's tomb was. The call was interrupted by the Whisper Man attempting to murder Jenny. River woke up Vastra and Strax, and the great intelligence appeared, using the face of Walter Simeon, to tell Clara that to save his friends, the doctor had to come to Trenzalore, the place of his grave. When she woke up from the conference, River stayed connected. Using the telepathic circuits to get the coordinates, the doctor and Clara went to Trenzalore, crossing the doctor's timeline. The great intelligence was waiting there and wished to enter the tomb of the doctor, a future, decaying version of the TARDIS. Entering the decaying TARDIS through a hidden passageway, Clara began to remember the events of a deleted timeline, in which the doctor told her about her multiple lives, 
causing her to panic slightly. They eventually made their way to the doctor's tomb, where the great intelligence demanded the doctor tell him his true name. When he refused, River uttered it, and the door opened. Inside the tomb, the intelligence entered the doctor's timeline, rewriting his history, changing all his victories into losses. The universe began decaying, all the people and civilizations saved by the doctor now destroyed. With no other choice, Clara did what she was meant to do, saying, run. Run you clever boy, and remember me, she walked into the timeline as well, scattering herself across time and space. This action projected her across time, creating many other versions of her that saved the doctor time and time again. Meanwhile, the eleventh doctor decided to jump into the timeline as well in order to save her. Hearing the doctor's comforting voice, she approached him. As they were just about to leave, Clara noticed an incarnation of the doctor that she'd never met. This version was the only one to break the promise of the name, the doctor. However, the stress of the experience caused Clara to faint, so she didn't find out anything more about this incarnation. Clara and the eleventh doctor then departed, with the mysterious doctor watching them leave. After she escaped the doctor's timeline, Clara could only remember bits and pieces of her Echo's lives. Some memories were more vivid, others she only recalled as dreams. Hanging out into space from the TARDIS, Clara and the Doctor found a Tanchen form, similar to Earth tardigrades. The Doctor told Clara that because the space between galaxies was so big, they were rarely seen, but each of the billions of macroscopic creatures out there were beautiful and unique, just like the trillions of microscopic ones on Earth. Soon after, they went on an adventure involving a dinner with alien robots, a small jewel-encrusted seashell stolen by Bozzy the Mysterio, and a chase across the snowscapes of Hollis IV. After the two had ended the Frogman Civil War, they were assaulted by Adam Mitchell who abducted Clara and placed her, along with all of the Doctor's other companions, in a suspended animation chamber. The companions were soon freed by Frobisher to fight off the Tremors Master's Otten army with the doctor delighting in introducing Clara to Amy Pond and Rory Williams before Adam sacrificed himself to thwart the master's plan. Along with the other companions, Clara attended Adam's funeral before she and the doctor resumed their travels. As a result of an accident caused by his fiddling with the TARDIS telepathic circuits, the doctor was left with the majority of his vast memory wiped as he and Clara were preparing to go on holiday. Using the 1200-year diary, Clara helped him remember his life. The doctor lamented that it was easier not remembering the people he had lost over the years, but Clara reassured him that he was a man who never ran from danger and had helped save billions of lives. Cheered up, the doctor put the TARDIS into flight as they proceeded to their holiday. One day, Clara awoke in a darkened and abandoned TARDIS, discovering herself to be in a spatial loop. Finding a button with a note that read, Do not touch, Clara decided that it was reverse psychology and pressed it plummeting into a white void where she was rescued by the Skyjack and taken to Tipperary Station, a meeting point of several alien scavengers, where she reunited with the Doctor, who had been there for three years from his perspective. As the two conversed, the Doctor came to the realization that they were still in the TARDIS, within an old console room whose preparations had been comically exaggerated. Arriving at the console, the Doctor explained that this was the machinations of the hypothetical gentleman, a disembodied entity that resided within the TARDIS matrix that the Doctor presumed to be a digital copy of a Time Lord tyrant, only for the being to reveal that it was the Matrix. After the Matrix explained how it became sentient, Clara, knowing that the Doctor was telepathically linked to the Matrix, took the initiative and stowed away on its craft, sabotaging it before the Matrix could cross the wormhole into the wider universe. The delay was enough for the Doctor to reset the TARDIS and trap the Matrix in a never-ending wormhole. After the aliens had all been returned home, Clara and the Doctor joined the crew of the Skyjack at VJ Day in the Hawaii. The Doctor later took Clara to Deadwood in 1882 where they crossed paths with Oscar Wilde and ran afoul of the Doctor's old foe Escartress who had put Earth on trial. As Clara worked with Calamity Jane, they discovered that Wild Bill Hickok and many others were being resurrected. After thwarting this scheme, the two went off to Shoreditch. After a particularly stressful day of nannying, the doctor took Clara to Qui Palta to relax only for both to fall victim to the psychic pollen of the local flowers, hallucinating an elaborate maze before Clara deduced the truth. Despite the danger, Clara was left exhilarated by the experience.